Hello everybody, my name is Sam, and this is the CameraLegend.com YouTube channel. Just a quick introduction. I've been chasing down cameras for over 35 years. I love cameras, man. And I know you guys do too. And so now I'm here to share my experiences with you. Okay guys, so today on this first episode we're going to talk about a mysterious camera legend. In 1994, there was an article in Popular Photography by the late great Bert Kepler. He wrote about receiving a box from Japan from Minolta Research and Development, Osaka, Japan. Inside that box, there was a mysterious camera that he had never seen or heard of. The camera was called the Minolta X600. Tonight, we're gonna to try to uh, demystify the X600. Sound like I should be on, um, I don't know if you guys remember, In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. It's like, was there a mysterious camera? Named the X600. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's go to the Okay, X600. ladies and gentlemen, you ready for that ta-da moment? Without further ado, here is the mysterious Minota X600. Only from the mind of Minota. All right. So what's so special about this camera, you might say? Well, outwardly, when you look at it, it looks... A lot like the later X series cameras, X700, X500, X570. But when you look closer, you're going to see some differences. Now, for good comparison, here is my X700. Now, here's a camera <clears throat> that I will review in the future, but here's a camera I know a little something about because this was my first real camera from 1985. And this is the actual camera. It still works, but it's got a problem, so I'm not using it so much. But um, I see a lot of people reviewing the X700 these days. And uh, I think it's great because it's a great camera. But personally, I can't get too excited with it because you know, I've, I've had this thing for, what, since 1985 for like 33 years. So it's like, it's like being with a lady for 33 years. You know, you already know the deal, right? Okay, so I got the cameras side by side. And from here... Uh, the differences are more obvious. On my war-torn X700, there is a nice large shutter speed dial, mode dial, program, aperture priority. On the X600, it doesn't have it. The shutter speeds will be, will be seen here, and they're controlled from this dial right here. And uh, this camera does have an aperture priority mode, which you just, when you get to auto, that's the mode right there. The on and off button is here. So this style is off, you can turn it on. It's got that Minolta thing where uh, you can go on once and then another on with a beep and off. X700, the, the on and off switch is here. It has the same thing on, you know, on and off with a beep. And uh, X700 has a exposure compensation dial right here. X600 doesn't have it. So in many ways, the X600 is a much simpler camera than the X700. So, if it's such a basic camera, what makes the mysterious X600 so special? Well, let me tell you, and you better hold on to your seats for this one. It has, ta-da, focus confirmation. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is inside the viewfinder, when you're looking through uh, the eyepiece, you see two arrows, two red arrows going like this. And once you achieve focus, there's a circle in the middle, a green circle, and it lights up green. And that tells you that you achieve focus. Now, I can hear you guys saying, wait a minute. I got this. I got this on my Nikon. I got this on my point and shoots. I got it everywhere. Yes, you do. Today we do. This is something we take for granted. But in 1983, you have to transport yourself. I always like to say, you have to transport yourself back in time. In 1983, you didn't have it, or there weren't many that had it. So it was a big deal. In fact, uh, as I said in the article, uh, they made a big deal about the Contax RX, which had this in-focus uh, or focus assistant, um, focus assistance 
um, system where it helps you focus. And that was in 1994, so this is like over a decade ahead of that. So Minolta was really a pioneering company, and um, that was a big thing. I mean, how is it in use? For me, I find that it works well in bright light, and in dimmer light, it's not so great. Sometimes it's a little off, but I mean, I think you can kind of expect that from a camera from 1983. And um, also want you guys to think of it this way. It was a big deal in 1983. If you, especially for you younger cats, if you guys are buying these vintage cameras, which I see a lot of reviews on, how many of those cameras, you know, manual SLRs that you're buying has uh, in-focus confirmation? Not many, right? So that's why you can see why this one was pretty special. And I believe it was a precursor to um, Minolta re releasing their uh, Maxim 7000 or Dynax Overseas 7000, which was the camera that revolutionized autofocus. So in hindsight, this is a pioneer, a pioneer camera and a camera legend indeed. So that's it pretty much. Um, you can read the rest of uh, the stuff on the article. I think I put a lot more stuff in there. Um, oh, by the way, I, I'm sure you guys want to see the lens, right? Camera porn. Lens porn. What I got? 50 millimeter 1.2 Rockor X. I know you like hearing that. Rockor. Anyway, it's an awesome lens. And I will profile it one day on Camera Legend. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, really do appreciate it. I know we're new here, but I am dedicated to bringing you all the cameras that you want to see in future installments. So please feel free to uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe for updates uh, on when we post up new videos. And we'll be back at you. Really do appreciate you. Thank you. And until next time, this is Sam from CameraLegend.com YouTube channel.